All right, guys, welcome back to Freedom Finance with Lanny. You know, today I really wanted to cover what is going on in the banking industry. I know there's a lot of videos, a lot of press, a lot of negative news out there. Um, but being from the industry, having over 10 years of experience in the industry, wanted to break down a few things that happened, as well as a few ways that you can, you know, have some tools to actually look at banks as an investment in case you're curious about, A, which ones are the safer one or which ones may have less volatility going forward and kind of what to look for when you're looking at a bank stock right now as the you know current financial crisis banking crisis that we're going through um, you know obviously everybody's aware of the you know three banks that failed with Silvergate Silicon Valley and Signature possibilities with First Republic as well as Credit Suisse um, but there's a, obviously large um, regional banks that are also um, having their stock price plummet um, just due to concerns within the banking system themselves. Uh, you know, three kind of bank stocks we'll talk about here um, will be K, uh, Key Bank, Huntington, as well as Ally. You know, three popular banks that many of us may even deposit at, bank with, have a credit card or a loan with. Uh, you know, I, I know there's a lot of Ally depositors out there to get the high yield savings account, which is currently, I think, 3.6%, as well as a no penalty 11 month CD at 4.75%, which was interesting because they released that 11 month no penalty product during the uh, weekend when the banks were uh, essentially closing up by the FDIC. But we'll look at you know the financial statements for three banks, just to pick out a few characteristics of what you can use and what you can look out for. If you're curious which bank may have the less, again, volatility, or may have less downside risk with more upside with what's uh, kind of going on in the industry. So the questions are is what happened, what caused this, and what were a few of the characteristics that occurred here? Well, let's go back to COVID 2020 with the pandemic and the economic stimulus. Again, there's plenty of articles out there, but I believe the stimulus was somewhere between $4 trillion to upwards of over $7 trillion. So that is money that was literally put out you know, to the U.S., to the citizens, to businesses, small and large. You know, when you think about what was the actual stimulus products, you know, you have your stimulus checks, you had your PPP or the Paycheck Protection Program uh, loans, you had SBA grants and loans that were going out there, as well as plenty of tax credits for businesses. Not to mention even economic impact payments or EIP that were Kind of granted to the states at the state level to give out to uh, to the citizens of each state. As consumers were receiving these deposits as well as businesses, the question was, was where to put it. So money flooded into banks, small and large, and then the banks then had the question of what do we do with it? Do we lend it? Do we invest it? So really, when you when it comes to your traditional brick and mortar banks like your Keys, your Huntington's, maybe even your Allies. You know, they were really making investments at that time in 2020 and 2021 into pretty much the record low interest rate environment into longer term mortgage backed securities and U.S. Treasuries, you know, somewhere that was definitely longer than a year, but more than likely had an average life of below 10 years, but still long. And then you had niche financial institutions such as Silvergate, Silicon Valley, et cetera, that were really dealing with private equity firms as well as, you know, maybe even in the crypto industry. So very niche, very high dollar concentration of customers, you know, again, over 85 to 90% plus of those deposits for those customers were uninsured. And they were making investments as well in similar type of products. Enter into 2022, as the Fed started battling inflation, they were juicing up interest rates at a record level. Again, over 450 basis points of rate increases. What this hat causes <clears throat> is the value of your investment portfolio significantly declines for those that had invested into those mortgage-backed securities and U.S. Treasuries, again, that were at record low interest rates. We're talking yields that were below 1%. So the value drops as rates go up. So many of these large institutions, such as the ones that failed, were sitting in large and or significant loss type of positions if they were forced to sell, such as you saw with the three banks that failed. So now we're gonna swap over to the computer so I can show you three of the banks and kind of where they're sitting at, just to give you again, the details, the line items and how to navigate a 10K 
so you can get an inside scoop of what to look for on a bank's balance sheet and in the footnotes so you can see if there's any concern or risk there um, as well as to see what other people are evaluating if there's another bank to fail or hey is there a better bank to invest my hard-earned dollars into for a potential again upside a good growing dividend as well as a as well as a place that you even may want to still continue banking with so let's dive into the three banks and again i appreciate the comments you know that you leave below as we're evaluating the three stocks all right guys now we're going to dive in we're on the sec edgar i'll leave the link in the description here um, you know we're going to look at three stocks again key ally and huntington you know key's ticker symbol is k-e-y allies is ally a-l-l-y and huntington bank is h-b-a-n so to navigate to the 10k which is the annual financial report in order for you to actually evaluate the financial statements you type in key you know you'll click on them when they pull up you go to the 10k and then you open up their 10k which we've already done and i'm not going to navigate through that for each company i just want to at least show you how to get to a quick way to get to the 10k report so here we are here is keys 10k we'll scroll all the way back up um, this was the one that was filed for the year end of 2022 so the th come to the some of the main characteristics here that we really want to dive into when evaluating key during this banking crisis or financial crisis or insert whatever name for this crisis you want to talk about um, we'll look at actually their equity and then their unrealized loss position on their investments as a component of their equity and then we'll also dive into the uninsured deposit uninsured deposit number as a percent towards to total deposit obviously the lower the better there and the lower the better as well on the unrealized loss position as a percent to your total equity and then we'll also look at the 30-day stock performance as well so here when you're at the 10k you'll get to the table of contents for example skip right to the balance sheets so here you'll see total equity was 13 billion 454 million so I'm, I'm kind of got a spreadsheet already created and you'll see we'll plug that in there and then you can see this financial statement line item called accumulated other comprehensive income or loss it's a loss of 6.3 billion and the majority of that will be from the investment values being far less than what their you know par values are again because interest rates have gone up so the value of those investments that were record low interest rates such as the treasuries and mortgage-backed securities so the value has gone down so we'll plug that in here so a percent of that unrealized loss to the total equity you know which again would be if there was no unrealized losses would be 19.7 billion um, 6.3 billion of that was in an unrealized loss position or 32 percent of their total worth is in an unrealized loss position so that's fairly high um, but not as high obviously as the other institutions that have failed now to find the total deposits on the same balance sheet again they had 143 billion on deposits as of December 31st so you'll also want to plug that in there and then you can even type in uninsured um, you'll jump down to the footnote here uninsured deposits totaled 67.1 billion at 1231.22 so out of their 143 billion 67 billion were uninsured or 47 percent you know this was obviously far this is far less than what silicon valley had which again was around 90 percent plus so you know pretty much half of that is where key currently stands um, and then I also wanted to show you the stock price performance over the last month. Recruit Key was historically trading between $18 and $20 a share, obviously down below $12 now as of March 17th. So they're down 37%, which again, once we get into the other dynamics of the other two bank stocks, will make sense. Because again, they had a high, high portion of their net worth slash equity is at 32% out of a lost position and almost half of their deposit base was currently uninsured as of the end of the year. Doing the same thing 
for a good old Green Bank Huntington. Ticker symbol is HBAN. Again, going to you know the 10K report through SEC Edgar. And then you just really want to bounce to the financial statements and supplementary data. And then the first um, you know, scheduled financial statement is the balance sheet. And similarly, here, total equity stands at 17.8 billion. And again, we will also add that there. And then their unrealized loss position on their investment portfolio primarily stands at 3.1 billion. So you'll see here already a trend where his key was in a 32% unrealized loss position on their equity. Huntington only has around 15% of their equity is in an unrealized loss position. So much better than key at this point. Again, similar size as well, because when you go up to the deposit base, they have 148 billion on deposits at Huntington Bank, which again is also headquartered in Ohio. Um, so we plug that number in there, 147.9 billion. And then similarly, what you can do is you control find and you wanna look up the uninsured. So here's your uninsured deposit base again as of the end of the year of December 31st, 22, net 47 billion. So again, far less than you know key, but still represents 32% of total deposits were uninsured. So about a third of their deposits are currently over that FDIC insured limit of $250,000. And again, looking at their stock, their stock is down uh, 31% in the last uh, you know month. Looks like I had that backwards here, so we'll update that. Um, so that is Huntington. Again, lower loss, unrealized loss on their uh, equity from their portfolio, and a lower uninsured deposit base versus key. So definitely an improvement from key, but you still also have a chance to get over a 6% yield um, for owning Huntington Bank. Key currently yields. 7%, which makes sense because they contains quote unquote more potential risk simply because of the concentration of uninsured deposits and the component of their equity in an unrealized loss position. Now let's dive into our good friends at Ally, which, you know, again, as I stated, they also currently have a nice 11, no, 11 month no penalty, 4.75% CD, uh, pretty much can operate almost as a savings account at this point. Um, but similarly, you want to jump to the financial statements and data, and we'll quickly go down through here. <clears throat> okay, they show their income statement as the first sta set of statements, but we'll jump to their balance sheet. And again, their total equity was $12.859 billion, so you plug that number up here. And similarly, they had a $4 billion of a net loss currently on that balance sheet from their investment portfolio. So their unrealized loss position represents 24%. So in between Huntington and, and Key at this point in time. And then if you scroll up on their balance sheet to their liabilities, total deposits was 152.3 billion. So definitely the biggest of the three. Think about all the retail depositors that are pushing their money into Ally over the last year to grab the highest yield or one of the highest yield savings accounts. I know that there are plenty of you know higher ones over at SoFi, Capital One, Marcus, you name it, but they still offer a 3.60% high yield savings. And then similarly, let's go find that uninsured balance. Kind of a little sneaky way, but they uh, they do discuss it right here. They had 15.2 billion of deposits estimated to be uninsured. So we'll use that figure here. So less than 10% of their deposits are actually in an uninsured position right now, which is, when you think about it, far less than what the three banks had that have failed. Um, definitely, you know, significantly lower than Key and Huntington on this screen here. Th that wouldn't be a concern for a run on Ally by any means, simply because we're talking smaller depositors. I mean, I don't have $250,000 on deposit at Ally. I wish I did, but again, usually the smaller retail depositors are depositing their funds with Ally whereas Key and Huntington are demanding more of those larger businesses and corporation deposits, which you know have not just 250,000 plus, but probably millions of dollars uh, banking with, uh, with Key and Huntington. Um, so there you have it. Here are the three stocks right there on the chart. 
that you can take a look at. Um, you know, again, you got Key, Huntington, and Ally. Key is in the largest unrealized loss position as a, as a component to their equity at 32%. They also have the highest concentration of uninsured deposits at 47%. Um, whereas compared to Ally, they have the lowest risk of deposits being uninsured at 10%, um, as well as they're in the middle of the road of their unrealized loss position on their balance sheet at 24%. Huntington has the lowest amount of unrealized loss as a component of equity at 15%, but still has a decent concentration of uninsured deposits at 32%. Well, guys, I hope this helped at least a explain how it started. Really goes back to the pandemic and the influx of you know four to seven trillion plus dollars going into the financial system, and then on top of that, you had those institutions investing into long-term record low-rate products, and then you had you know a run on one possible two banks maybe. Um, from just private equity, big names out there, which caused a domino effect onto other institutions. And here are really the big factors to look at when it comes to evaluating a bank's stability, liquidity, um, and, as well as overall risk and you know investment management. Uh, definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like this video. Leave a comment or question below, and I will do my best to answer it right away. Um, and definitely let me know in the comments if there are other videos that you want to see. But again, I hope that this was helpful and that you have benefited from it. Thanks again. I'll catch you out on the next video. This was Lanny from Freedom Finance. Talk soon.